Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time it is in the world, wherever you are tuning in from. Of course, it may even be Happy New Year for some of you, depending on where you are tuning in from. But uh, yeah, uh, that's how it is. Uh, let me know in the live chat, by the way, where you are tuning in from. Uh, Zheng and Zhang, by the way, have held serve. So it is one love to the Chinese pair, as this is basically a winner, a winner takes all up against Djokovic and Danilovic. Uh, the winner of this match will win the tie 2 1. Of course, if China win it, uh, they will then book themselves a place in the next round. For Serbia, it may come down to hoping that they can uh, seal a best runner up spot if they were to lose it. Of course, China will be thinking exactly the same. Um, for China, it might be a bit tougher though, because of course, they won 2 1 against um, Czech Republic. Uh, so a 2-1 win followed by a 2-1 loss. I think you're going to have to win one of your... You're going to have to win your match 2-0, uh, basically, is what I'm saying. Oh, that return was wild from Zhang. 15-love uh, uh, for Serbia. Let's get the score up on the screen for you. I know that Damien and Anastasia as well are going to be joining us uh, very, very shortly. Let's uh, share the score with you on the screen before they arrive. Um, ba -ba. And by the way, yeah, we've hit 5K subs. So congratulations to everyone. Uh, if you think it's worthy of a congratulations uh, for those of you who have subbed or whatever. Um, anyway, make sure uh, Serbia's favorite to win in mixed doubles, in your opinion, Okan, thank you for tuning in. Uh, do hit the like button and... Even though we've hit the 5K sub uh, target, please do subscribe. Uh, oh, it's an interesting rally, this. Lofted one, a smash here, though, for Danilovic. Doesn't put it away. Zhang on the defensive, but it lands out. 40 love for the Serbian pair. The itches of Danilo, uh, the vitches of Danilo and Djoko. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to get through this doubles match with Zheng and Zhang on the other side of the net. China versus Serbia would probably be a nice, easy way uh, to do that, I guess. Thanks for joining, by the way, Okan. Can you please subscribe? Uh, one one it is now by the way uh, because Serbia have just held serve so that's cool and good news for them and like I say the winner of this tie will end up winning the winning the tie two one for China it'll mean a place in the next round Thanks, Okan. Yeah, I, I I mean, it was there for her, 5-all, or sorry, 5-4, and Kim Wen-Jeng mentioned it in her speech at the end. A little bit of a communication issue there, I think, between Danilovic and Djokovic. Yeah, um... It was it was there at five four. Um, she had chances to make it five all, and probably would have been the slight favour to win the set. I mean, Kinwen was struggling physically and mentally at that point, and a break of serve, and we might have seen a full on meltdown. But anyway, there we go. Kinwen Zheng, is she going to put this away? She hits it towards Djokovic. Djokovic gets his racket on it. Says says does this to Kinwen. There's all smiles there. Kinwen sticks her tongue out back. There's a lot of jovialness going on the court here. A lot of fun and games. The can someone tell me what... Hi, Jake, by the way. Great that you've come to join us. What time is it where in the world you are? Let me know in the live chat. What time is it? Where? Tell me where you are, which city, which country, 
and tell me the time. So that way I know how long you've got till midnight. I'm just wondering in Perth, let's have a quick look. What time is it right now in Perth? Ten thirty. So in another hour and a half, uh, the the possibility of this match uh, or this tie spanning over two years might not happen, especially if one of the, one of these two uh, teams wins comfortably. So where are you, Ocan? If it's five thirty-two, are you in? Are you in Asia somewhere? Hi, Damien. Uh, I can see he's just uh, limbering up. Uh, Damien will be with us in a minute. Alexander, it's 11.34 a.m. in Chile. And uh, Okan is in Turkey. Ah, okay, cool. So in Turkey, it's just past half past five in the afternoon. So you've still got another six and a half hours. An hour and a half. Uh, hey, Damien. An hour and a half uh, threshold this to go over two years this match I, I thought that it would but then we've had two very comfortable wins for Djokovic and Zhang Ajay. yeah but the, the, the break was very close uh, it was very uh, long though like the break between the singles and the yeah breaks. they should have made it longer <laughs> maybe they were doing it on purpose yeah maybe yeah um listen what I heard you talking before uh, the, or, or as the first match commenced, and you were sort of saying, uh, you were debating over which one was the heavier favorite, Djokovic or Zheng, uh -huh. in their two matches. I actually thought that Zheng was the bigger favorite over Danilovic uh, compared to Zhang and, and, and Djokovic. Just because I thought Djok Zhang's box of tricks meant there was a sort of random element. You know, Djokovic is the is the is somewhere between slight and Red hot favorite against every player on the planet on a hard court. And the slight ones are against the two or three players in the world on a hard court who can bring it to Djokovic. And then he's heavy favorite against everyone else, except maybe a random one, like a, a, a you know, a, a, a Zhang, a, a Karatsev, um, a uh, Marajan on a, on a clay court. Just, just, these kind of just just wild ones you just don't know what you're going to get and i thought i thought therefore zhang could le easily lose three and two as i think he did or it might go to a third set tie break yeah um i get that you know these are the players that that top seeds don't want to face in the opening round you don't want to play Zhang. Zhang. you want to play i don't exactly. know roberto carbaez baena and um yeah i totally get that but at the same time you know kin van zhang is just not at that sort of like consistency level it seems where i can really call her that sort of a favorite against someone although maybe she is now you know she, since exactly. the asian games well well since the us open she's been winning like what 75 percent of her matches if not more so um maybe she is now i mean may maybe that has actually changed yeah exactly and also so the, I, uh -huh. I was thinking and i will say hello to anastasia in a minute if i haven't done so in the middle of that sentence but um exactly there was another thing was that was that zheng's form so it doesn't feel like zheng is coming in cold like 90 percent of the tour it feels though as though she was playing well and, and playing quite recently and did she might have played in one or two of those exhibitions as well i'm not sure she played in the that league thing that they had uh i can't remember the full title yeah but I anyway I wasn't, um, I wasn't following it no i wasn't but i just thought zheng was playing there for some reason uh hey anastasia I think you're on mute or your volume is down for some reason. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Um, anyway, I can't hear Anastasia. I don't know why, because I don't think she's on mute. But once we get that fixed, we'll be having a good old chat, I'm sure. Can you hear yeah, me now? Then, oh, I can yes, now. we can hear yeah. you now, yeah. Congratulations, John, 5,000. Yeah. 5,000. A, a lot of spamming in the last 48 hours has got us over that uh, hump. And by the way, my landlady is the person who pushed us over 5K. Way to go. <laughs> yeah, because of that was a facial, like face-to-face, -face, actually not facial, probably the wrong word. That was a face-to-face -face spam. The rest, of course, was all done okay. to people online. But that was an actual face-to-face. -face. Hey, uh, you couldn't just click this button, could you? 
And um, <laughs> she was yeah. she was like rent's due, so I might as well. <laughs> I mean, she might have unsubscribed, by the way, since that conversation. We're back down to four nine nine nine. But um, yeah. I added two subscriptions myself today, so because <laughs> you've got a couple of other YouTube accounts. All sorts of spell doggery has been going on. Mm. Uh, to get us over that threshold, but we're there anyway. And, and now, of course, I like there, that phrase, skull yeah. duggery. I, I like it too. Yeah. Is it used in the US? No, no, definitely not. No. Mm -mm. Can't remember why. I was watching a show, I think, that used it, and I was like, ooh, that's fun. Um, I like but it's it exciting. Too. I think, you know, we're going to get to 5,000. There must be a of the people watching right now, some people who are not subscribed. So get us to 5,000 and make and it stick. Let's get to 5,010. <laughs> yes. That, that magical figure that we all love and cherish. I was kind of uh, hoping it would be during the stream, honestly. Um, I guess yeah. it did happen pre-stream. Yeah, I thought, and I didn't expect it, but of course then it was like, I can't waste this opportunity. So being on, on, on so close and just having a chat with my landlady face to face. Um, <laughs> So there was something cool on that. But yeah, I thought I thought actually it wouldn't happen at all, to be honest with you. Probably when we sort of just added one or two during the, the first match, which obviously involving Djokovic, I thought might be a pretty popular one. Um, then then me, basically we, we got five or six quickly through the next one. And then uh, we're here we are. Yes, Anastasia. I was like, you have to believe. Always mm. believe. <laughs> yeah. The only uh, I like that. And I think in a sporting context, it's very important. The only thing is, I also hear a lot of people that vote for Brexit said the same, and so then I, I feel about, I feel a bit like we just got to believe in Brexit. You got to ignore all the facts and figures and all the reasons why it might not be a good idea. So I'm not a, a huge fan of, of this. You just got to believe in every in every man. But in in a in a in a sporting context, I do think uh, what's the expression I'm looking for? The placebo effect. Uh, yeah. I think it's kind of a thing where. If you sort of believe things are going to happen and can, can then I think it will, will, will get you over the hump sometimes. Anyway, I see Catherine Whitaker having a chat with Goran Ivanisa. She's got no idea what they're saying. Uh, Pera Riva, of course, has joined the Kinwen Zheng team. Um, give us some thoughts on uh, Pera Riva, uh, our Pera Riva expert, Damien Kust. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm not no Pera Riva expert, honestly. He's 200 days where it'll do. His yeah, his 200 like... days were a little before me. Like he retired so early uh, because of like nagging injuries. And um, but of course, you know, I have a lot of um, a, a bit of a soft spot for him because after all, he is a challenger legend. So it's a good story that he is currently coaching someone, and of course, someone at such a high level as well. I was hoping that someone would pick him up after um, Coco. Obviously, it's a it's a player he's already worked with before. Um, always good to see him in this role for sure. There was also an interview with him earlier. I saw during the match. Uh, I saw it too. Game. But like yeah. these interviews mid mid game, even uh, it's a little weird to me. By the way, yeah, I was even ready with this celebratory drink, but now that we did it pre stream, I don't think I should. I don't think I should do it. You know. Yeah. But we're, I, I was but going we, to bring it out. Yeah. But are we still at like? Uh, Four thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. No, no, we've got it. We've got five k. Oh, now we we've got it. Five k. Okay. Yeah, we did it pre pre stream. Can somebody and unsubscribe just... and then oh, click no. and then just wait yeah. five minutes and then subscribe again and then Damien will get back on the drink. Or on yes, okay, that's it. absolutely not even back. It's it hasn't me, been opened yet. Let me do it. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two two espressos, but I fancy a third one. Uh, so that would be the the, the just because of the time of day. Um, it's a slight. Uh, we, we'll, we'll talk a bit more off air, but my, my I'm going to be so. drinking this anyway later today. You know, it's it's really only a matter of when I will start. So let me just see if somebody listened to my plea to unsubscribe, which is a, a very unusual one. Let's just see if anyone did it. Well, I'm doing it no, right it's, now. Well, it's worse. It's worse. If actually, if me, if me and Anastasia do, because we need two people to unsubscribe. <laughs> this is so weird. Like, because of course, just, I'm, you I just, just unsubscribe. I did. Good, we're at 5,000. If I now unsubscribe as well, because you can't get Damien to do it from one of the three accounts that he subscribed to, because that would be even more of a, of a fix, although it is a fix anyway. Let me yeah. see if I can. It is, yeah. It was funny. I was listening to, um, while you figure that out, I was listening to Catherine Whitaker um, interview Goran. And yeah. the bit that I caught was um, he, she asked him, like, how difficult is it for, um, for someone to partner 
Novak in doubles. And he oh, was yeah. like, yes. He was like, it's very difficult. And it only really works if he's in a good mood. And today's in a good mood. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I can see he's in a good mood because when, when Kim Wen Cheng hit a cross court shot at kind of at him, uh, she hit him a... twice. She did it twice. Oh, it it but they were all smiles afterwards. So it was so go good. at him. Go after Djokovic. <laughs> I know. I'm like, she yeah. did it once when he was at the baseline, and then a second time when he was at the net. And I was like, go get it, Quinn Wen. You got this. I I generally see him always in not always in a good mood, but often in a good mood in these moments. I think he was in a bit of a grumpy mood in when he was partnering at the at the Davis Cup uh, alongside um, Kitsmanovic. Kitsmanovic, yeah. But I think that was more because he just lost his singles match to Sinner in a pretty painful circumstance. I think yeah. it was more because oh. of that. And I did feel a sort of negative vibe from both players on the court that in that particular moment, or particularly Djokovic. Uh, by the way, uh, click subscribe, Anastasia, because we're at four nine 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 again, and you subscribe. will be the second second person to make us to five k. I did it. Great. And I'm now going to put refresh on my phone. And by the way, actually, my talking tennis account, I can't subscribe. We're back up to 5,000, by the way. And we're now going to go to 5,001. Damien. Uh, there you go. We did well, it, Damien. I, yeah. I guess I have I mean, to drink. That's that. doggery to the absolute nth degree. <laughs> Yay. You know, Yay. Cheers to the whole talking <laughs> tennis family. Cheers to what drink is that, everyone Damien, on the, the chat. That's whiskey. That's. William Whiskey. Peel. There's no, there's no warm up for Damien. He's in aces down the tee from the minute he opens the bottle. <laughs> yeah, that's more or less, more or less a warm up before the party later today. I'm only gonna take a bit of this. I don't want everyone to drink from that, but I also have other alcohol too. Um, yeah. What was the main thing you were drinking in Bonn? Was it tequila? In Bonn, uh, it was either tequila or rum. I think it was rum. I think it was 40%. Uh, but it actually was just tasting pretty good. Like usually when you have 40% alcohol, you only consume it in like small parts, you know, shots or whatever, maybe a drink. But that rum was actually pretty okay. And, you know, that led to me maybe going overboard a bit with the <laughs> sample size, let's say. Anastasia, um, I know you have yeah. five questions for me, but we'll do it at uh, probably at the next break of um, yeah, the, of the next break. I'll I'll what? ask it one per the every thousand, one per yes, yes one per every thousand. Idea, yeah, and not uh, five thousand questions might be a little bit much, especially as we're going to be hitting midnight in various different places over the next few hours. But um, uh, Damien, I have got another very random question for you, and the, there is a reason for it. Do you like cheese? No. Oh, really? then That's you all? are in. In the Venn diagram, alongside in this like little area, along with Rafa Nadal, in that you tequila is your choice of alcoholic beverage or a choice of alcoholic beverage. A choice, yeah, it's not my a choice. choice. No, yeah, no. but I'm, I, I guess Rafa, I've seen Rafa drink at least non-alcoholic beer because I think he he promotes one of the beers, uh, one of the Spanish beers. I can't remember which one it is right now, but um, and uh, he's a he's a, he doesn't like cheese, which came up as well with Botic van der Zandschel when I when I spoke to him. I asked him about his fondness for cheese, you know, Netherlands and all that. And uh, he said, doesn't like cheese. I was like, oh, you and Rafa got something in common. So just to explain myself, I like cheese on like a pizza or basically whenever it. it's baked, got whenever it. it's fried, whatever. I just don't you like just don't it raw. Work. I wouldn't wow. eat uh, a slice uh, of cheese. I wouldn't. I think you, I have, I'll have to check with Rafa uh, whenever we next. I'll, I'll WhatsApp him later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't have his WhatsApp. But um, I've got Tony's. But anyway, that's another thing. But um, Jesus, yeah. John. I mean, that was yeah. That was. Is that is that is that too much of a is that too much of a boast? Yes. <laughs> anyway, it is what it is. Sorry, I'm just a bit giddy at the moment. Uh, and that's just two coffees. What was going to say? Um, yeah. I have oh, to well, start actually watching the match. By the way, <laughs> I am. I, I am. Actually, you, my eyes are on it, but I'm not paying attention. Is true. Ex exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think the Rafa thing on cheese. By the way, it was in the context of tapas and snacks and and all that stuff. And in Spain, cheese is kind of on a cheat on a board with ham and stuff. So I think it's in that category of of raw, as you say, Damien. Um, that was by the so way, good. since retiring, I think um, Trotsky's enjoying. And, and relaxing his himself, if you know what I mean. He's 
He's enjoying his retirement. Do you know what I mean, Damien? Or, or captain? That he got fat or what? Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah. Anastasia is far too innocent to get it, but you got it, Damien. Yeah, that's what I meant. I actually yeah. don't know if he got fat. I was just basing on what you said. I, yeah, I, I don't that's know. That's good. That means I was describing it quite well. Feeling, you. But... Two, two European males got it, but a North American uh, female was not. I was, I was like, <laughs> oh, just, you know, being team captain of Davis Cup and United Cup and just chilling. No. It looks okay. By the way, we've got quite a few. Despite the non-tennis chat, we, we, we've actually got quite a few uh, people tuning in right now. Uh, maybe they like the non-tennis chat. I don't know. But we're forcing on them. Anyway, we've got a, uh, a game point. My stream, by the way, Damien, is quite far ahead of yours. I'm just watching on YouTube. But my stream, I noticed that this morning, uh, was probably about one or two points ahead of Damien. Are, are you watching on YouTube or, or tennis channel, um, Anastasia, or tennis TV? I'm watching. I'm actually watching on tennis TV, and I just got to a game point now. Yeah, we're very similar. I'm at game point for Zheng and Zhang. Zheng okay. serving to Dan Nilovich. Down the T forehand return. Now exchange and now just cross court here, as you'd expect. In this doubles dynamic, uh, ooh, Djokovic, they're moving across, as you also probably would expect, and maybe it was enough oh. to put off the Chinese pair or put off Zheng. And now we have a deciding point. This is huge as well. Zheng serving to arguably the greatest returner of all time to no. get the first break of serve uh, in yeah. this particular encounter. I mean, she's serving at Danilovic, not at Djokovic. No, she was serving at Danilovic. She's now serving at Djokovic. Djokovic now, yeah. Oh, because you're on a different point. Ah, uh, okay. yeah, so, so we're ahead of you. I, I think you're ahead. That, I think you're behind me. Away, as you walked away, I was just saying, I noticed that I think I'm one or two points ahead of you. Yeah, I think you're behind me, actually. Although she is serving to Dan Lewis. You're absolutely right. She's just double faulted anyway. Yeah. Sorry, Damien, to spoil it. But you were right. She's because uh, So I guess... No, I, you are point. actually behind me. You're actually behind me, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. the, the deciding point is going to be always women at women and men at women. Okay. Okay, got it. Learn the rules. So, Anastasia, give me your five questions. We'll see if we can get them done in a minute and a half. Although these oh, no, I can do them. I can do them one at a time. But my first, my first question for the first thousand subscribers is, what was your favorite tennis moment of the channel this year? past season so 2023 season today hitting 5k chatting to you <laughs> two coercing damien into uh, drinking a, a whiskey <laughs> but but there's a hell of a lot of recency thoughts i don't know if it's bias in in that because i can't think much back, back beyond last night um <laughs> there's there's a nice answer um that i would appreciate but then well, uh, uh, go for it, it. What, I can't oh. think what it would be, but it would obviously be sharing a stream with you at some point, Damien. Uh, mm. Go on, tell me what you would like. Sort of, time. sort of, sort of. As we're coercing each other into stuff, you might as well coerce me into a very favorable answer. No, no, I was just thinking of the Bonn vacation or whatever. It is. Oh, Bonn, even, even closer. That's far too far away. But yeah, yeah, I mean, we had some good times. I mean, the pub quiz, although that's not about talking tennis. In a way, yeah, the, the streaming, even the streaming, right? I mean, as a whole, I was just treating that one trip as a whole, like as a me whole. Me going one to get moment. coffee at nine in the morning after not sleeping <laughs> for sort of twelve hours through the Going night. to sleep at six p.m. and then waking up at noon at midnight. I mean, to, really, uh, that the, 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 that was all a bit of a low light in a way. No, no, no offense to anyone uh, involved. Wow. But, that whole <laughs> but we all went through it. There was solidarity and. Um, the problem with the Australian Open, Damien, is I found the whole tournament a bit of a dull affair, except for the women's final. The rest but that was the second week. That was the second week. We did the I first know, week I know. together. First week we had Andy Murray, and again, first week was actually good. First week was actually good. Yeah, there was a lot of good things on. The problem with the first week, though, as well, is I'm also thinking of Rafa's injury, too, which I know is not mm -hmm. high on your list of thoughts of a the first week, Damien. But yeah, that, not really. That, that smeared things somewhat. Um, but no, good, good moments with you. And of course, uh, Mario, it was good to meet you. And, and I, I, I think it was, uh, it was cool. And we'll, we'll, we'll do it again somewhere, somehow. Um, we'll find a window in all our schedules that works. And uh, Indian, Indian Wells is something I was thinking about it for Indian Wells, actually, especially as it's a friendlier time zone. Yeah. Time, and it might, it, might it involve the tennis match if it's in person? Oh, exactly. That's another reason to get Damien over. Problem is, we'll yeah. be on carpet, and I don't know if that might... I think ca carpet might favour Damien. 
<laughs> just because I'm, I'm a, tough to I'm say. A, if I decide to grind it out against you, and you know, because you're old, <laughs> then I want <laughs> then I want it on clay. But if we actually start playing, and I realize that I can overwhelm you, then sure, carpet is the pick. So um, I, I think... would like. Maybe maybe two matches would be <laughs> the right. Yeah, we'd love to do two, and then a third one on grass or, or hard court. Um, I actually think that that it would even itself out in terms of grinding it out and, and overpowering me because I think grinding it out won't work despite my age. I, I'm rarely struggle physically. Maybe if I played a couple of back to back three setters like in in consecutive days, uh, or I had like a weekend at the Rafa Nadal Academy as I've done, uh, that is insane. Uh, in terms of just feeling it up for sort of the third or fourth session. Uh, anyway, we've got some break points here. Damien, you might point. be ahead of me. So you, yeah, we've yeah. got some break points for the Chinese pairing. And I'll, I'll give a final answer uh, sort of to, to Anastasia's question. And then probably the next chain of end, we'll do a, we'll do a question for uh, countdown of five. Uh, a round of applause there from Kim Wen Zheng. So we've got uh, Danilovic serving here. Two break points. Zheng to return. Oh, she's mishit that, but she's got away with it. Has she? She has got away with it, yeah. Oh. Djokovic not hitting many balls here. This reminds me of some of the doubles. Uh, oh, it's gone out. So it's 30 oh. 40. Some of the times we, we play doubles at the unprofessional level, you sort of do go for the weaker, you know, because there's a bit more of that. When you've got two doubles guys, two doubles girls, it's a bit different, but you're going to go for the weaker one. Do you know what I mean? Also, yeah, after normal. yeah, after this point, do you guys want to answer this question from Okan in the chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to bring it up as well. Yeah, yeah. That's It's a good one. Sure. Sorry. Sorry for ignoring the chat. We have been a bit uh, self-indulgent. <clears throat> but fortunately, we haven't got... Oh, and they've held the point, so it's gone to juice. Uh, yeah, so I actually don't don't know how mm -hmm. um, you know why Djokovic chose the United Cup this year because obviously he was playing Adelaide last year and he won it, so <laughs> clearly it I was think, a good one. I think it would be better for him in a, in a short um, answer. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm I'm surprised he chose the ATP. Uh, I mean, United Cup. I don't know what exactly. I the have a theory. Was, but... Yeah, we had a break. Do by the way, think Sorry, it's because just... of the. Sorry, we oh. had a break. Go on, go on, Anastasia. Don't you think it's about um, the Olympics? prep for the olympics because he's not going to get a lot of chances step. yeah but that, is he what does he really want to play with Daniel, danielovic there in mixed maybe i, I mean I got, to just I get a chance him. to win any medal he might he played with stevanovic in tokyo and he actually sort of gave up on the chance to win the medal mm. if you remember that uh, he withdrew after losing the bronze medal match he withdrew from the bronze medal match in mixed right um but yeah, maybe. I mean, it, it's I mean, why Shvantik and Kurkat are, are going to play even with each other not, so much, right? Even if it's not with the right partner, David, it is at least doubles. Doubles competitive yeah. practice. But is he going to play doubles at the Olympics? I don't know. He's he's not going to play all three, right? Did he, not, did he play doubles in he played doubles in Beijing but pulled out at the bronze medal match? Did he or pulled out the semis or something like that? Beijing was 2008. Sorry, not Beijing, um, Tokyo. Tokyo, yeah, he did. Yeah, he played doubles. There was a lot of controversy about him pulling out. If you remember, but that's mixed, wasn't that yeah, mixed? mixed? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was talking about, about mixed. Yes, I mean he pulled out after losing the bronze medal match in singles, and he uh, pulled out with Stevanovic. But did he also play doubles, like men's doubles? I don't. No? I don't think he played all three. So, otherwise. yeah, and 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 I also don't think he would play all three now. No, but I do think. Anastasia might have a point. I I, I, I can't because I actually that. think in answer to the question, I think he 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 would be better off. I, I I've been saying it for eighteen months or so now, maybe longer. Mm -hmm. These team tournaments before the Australian Open, I don't think are ideal preparation for for two reasons. One, you know, you're playing doubles, you're playing a lot of tennis. It can be mentally exhausting if you're going into the final and maybe you lose it and just the the, the nation and and we know how much you know Djokovic, you know. Yeah. But you get a week it. off. You get a week off, right? You do, you do, you do. Yeah, it's true. But then I just think singles tournament, boom. You know, and you're in control of your own destiny as well. You could go out in the group stage here and have two weeks off. Yeah, but here you have more guaranteed matches, actually, right? I mean, you go out in yeah. the first round at yeah. an ATP 250 and you have one singles match. But Djokovic Whereas... in Adelaide knows he's going deep. 
Mm, I mean, it is a risk still. And here he has four guaranteed matches, basically. Right. As it stands yeah, right I... now, maybe more, because they are about to, well, have a couple of set points. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think um, the moment I saw he had entered, I thought for sure this is the Olympics because, you know, I think we've all talked about how this is such a important thing for him to get a, a medal at the Olympics, preferably a gold medal at the Olympics. And this is giving him the opportunity to practice when I don't think he's going to get much chance throughout the year. Although if we, if we see Novak just start entering all these doubles and tournaments, then you'll know for sure that that's what it is. But I feel he won't have enough time to practice with other Serbian players to kind of feel them out. Like, I don't think he's done, you know, he's played with what? Mimor now. Has he played with anyone other than Mimor? Probably and with like Tati um, a few times, I think. Um, Never played with Leslo. Leslo yeah, Jarre. did he play with Leslo Jer? No. Not in Davis Cup, he didn't. Probably no. not, but that's because Jerry doesn't play doubles whatsoever. But I think well, he, he's played with Tatic, I think, at least once. Like, that could be a pairing that actually works. But they would have to play men's doubles, not mixed doubles, right, at the Olympics. Wait, did Quinn Wen just run for a bathroom break just now? In the middle of a... Set. What? Wait, really? Oh, in the middle of a point. In the middle of a so point. I think game. he just... Yeah, I think he just I mean, maybe she's puking or something. I don't know. I mean, li listen, I would say during the match that she had before, in that first set, I was a bit worried about her. Yeah, she's back now. She's back I, now, but that's... In the first set, she looked like, even after like the third game, she was sort of Rafa sweating-esque. Um, oh, really? Okay. I don't think I, she would get to the bathroom. And like when she's walking back, Jian uh, Zhang is now like, tapping her on the shoulder, it like in a sort a of, a of clothing or something. I don't know. caring way. And now the umpire will also have to talk about her, talk to her. Um, yeah. I don't know what happened, but I mean, she could What's have been to her? or something. I'm, I'm yeah, curious. She but... Time violation warning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. But um... she had one. She had one warning and they lost a the first serve in that first set. She was pretty flustered at various points in that first set. And I thought if um, Danilovic had broken her at 5-4, and she was threatening to do so, as, as, as Jen was trying to serve it out, I, I oh. thought that, that could have changed things. Oh, has there been a double fold? No, yes. your eyes are going to bleed, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so the Chinese hold and force uh, the Serbians to serve it out. But yeah, it was a... Uh, I mean... Bleed wow. maybe a little exaggeration. I, I I don't think it was, it wasn't like a a a, a, a whole Garuna smash in Monte Carlo. <laughs> that was a that was a, a not a not a light, low light exactly for talking tennis this year, but that was um maybe a, a tennis quality low light if you like. Although yeah, that still made the matches of the year series, but um, yeah, and it really David wasn't Schick that horrible. Up. And like it he was, was pretty bad. It was big, was though. Struggling. It was big. He was struggling physically. I know, and I and, agree with you on that one. I do agree with you on that. And it was much, much tougher than this volley. Um, yeah, someone was also talking about Nola, um, that, that it would be helpful for him to get a couple of ATP 250s to break single trophy record. I think it's just well established that Djokovic doesn't really care about that. Like, you know, if, if it happens, it's also, sure, it's fine to have this record as well to you mean Jimmy get Connors to record? Connors. Yeah, I mean, Connors, but, you know, first and foremost to exceed Federer as well. But, uh, like, I don't think he cares about Federer. that. I, th I think he's just... Mm, depends on what he plays. If he keeps playing 10, 12 events a year, it could be tricky. But we'll see. He's, he likes, like, five right now, right? So, in, in a single season, it's tough to do, but it's How probably... How did he win last year? Six? Easy for Djokovic. Around five, six, something like that. So, so he could need two seasons for that, yeah. Or actually seven. Wow. I didn't even realize. Yeah, actually seven. But he also played an ATP 250 in Adelaide, which he might not do this year. Uh, but yeah, it's it's going to be somewhere like two seasons, maybe maybe uh, you know one would be would require another phenomenal campaign. But I, I don't think he cares about that. Simply, like I don't think it's a, it's a, on the top of his priority list. Yeah, I agree. I've got a rounded answer to your to your first of five questions, Anastasia, and it is this. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't include you, Anastasia, so I apologize for that. But it will one All day. Good. 
So you'll, 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 no, but you, you, anyway, you'll, you'll see what I mean in a minute. But it does include Damien, and it does sort of include the part of what he even sort of coerced me into saying earlier, which is actually it was meeting five, six, seven members of the of the talking tennis team community, whatever, uh, at various points. So obviously meeting Mario and Damien, and then at Wimbledon meeting uh, Jack and uh, our, our dearly beloved Jakob and um, and Nick and Claire, met Claire twice actually uh, this year, both in Malaga and at Wimbledon. And so, yeah, meeting these people, and, and I apologize if I'm missing anyone off. Oh, Jethro, I met, met Jethro twice, although actually the first time was last year. Um, yeah, met Hania last year too, and this year too. So yeah, I guess it really was cool meeting meeting these people that, that they really do exist and they're not just, uh, <laughs> somehow bots in a in a sort of uh, uh virtual way um yeah. and i'm sure you do exist too anastasia and, and fingers crossed we get to meet one day yes please hopefully hopefully in 2024 that was a good answer i'm going to leave my next question and then you can answer it as you feel you know when you can but my next question is what was your favorite last year live chat moment like who, who in the live chat just... I, I know this one already, but I'll tell you at the end of the set. Okay, good. <laughs> I but I know it. it. That was an immediate feeling. And, and uh, I think I've even made it into a short and called it my my highlight. But uh, oh, really? okay, we've got, okay. we got 15.30 here on the... I, I'm curious as to why I was ahead of you this morning, Damien, but now you're... you're have you switched streams some, somehow? Actually, no, no. Uh, my usual streaming platform this morning was um, behind for some reason. I guess, I don't know, they were using something else. But this one is back to being very quick. Uh, but yeah, some, someone earlier in the chat was saying that, um, what was it about Danilovic? That, um, yeah, Olga's weakness puts much strain on Nola. And there was that one game that she was really perfect in, you know, that free all break. She, she pretty much earned it for Team Serbia. But now we're really seeing that. I mean, they are just going at her, Kivan and Jiren, and and yeah. Um, yeah, it's not going too well. That that volley, they weren't even going for her, right? It was just random that she got such a clean ball. But but now they're like really trying to find her at the net, and most of the time it does result in a point. By the way, that return from Zheng from the Novak serve was pretty cool. Bearing in mind the earth. Can I say Novak is one of the best servers in the world? I think I can, can't I, yeah. Damien? Yeah, top 10, top 15, shortly. Yeah, that's what I mean, top 10, yeah. So 30-40, still a great point here. Uh, and it's going to be a second serve for Zheng to look at. <laughs> Interesting, that conversation with Pedro Riba, I think one of the, the take from that was that he mentioned something about the return of serve, I think. Just get a few more returns in, he said. Um, You're not. The, he's not going to like what he sees now. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I had a feeling that having just served the return so well on the second serve, I think it was from Djokovic, that I had a feeling that the the headlights might appear and therefore it might go wrong for her um, before you even said what you said. Yeah, but it, was, it, it was such a makeable return, right? I mean, yeah, great point. Up. Of course, they still have one more. We'll see what happens then. But yeah so it's still got a, a the biggest point of the match and you get these sort of thresholds that you don't get uh in in normal format uh, with deciding points because basically the winner of this point will either win the set or, or break serve mm. uh, damien has probably already seen it damien's already in the year 2024 he's so far ahead <laughs> That's a joke I've used in about 37 different ways this year, actually. But uh, that was the first time I've used it in a year since, I think. That's true, yeah. <laughs> oh, dearie me. Uh, I get why Xi Jinping uh, Jin moved across like that. Uh, I don't know if, oh. if, if Djokovic second-guessed it, but he, he it was one of those ones where you're on the doubles court, you sort of move over. But somehow, can you communicate to your doubles? On a serve, you can, but you can't really communicate that information midpoint. Later on, no, not really. No. Say, I'm going this way, so therefore you get your yeah, partner to no. switch. But I don't think even that would have been enough. But anyway. Some, uh, sometimes, sometimes we criticize time. Taylor Fritz for just standing there like a, you know, I don't even know how to call him. Like I mean, a post or something. Like a or a post. Statue. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, figure, statue, whatever. And sometimes it's Jihan Zhang who tried to do something here well 
All right, Anastasia. So I'm going to answer your question, which is um, in January of this year, I think it was Australian Open men's semi final, uh, Djokovic against um, Tommy Paul. Mm -hmm. And fairly early on in the chat, uh, somebody joined the chat and said um, something like, Are you showing the match? You know, one of those classic ones, or has the match started yet? And we're like, Yeah, it started just now for a few minutes ago. Are you showing it? No. And then I think the, the final comment, which is the funny bit, was um, this is the most boring stream I've ever seen by. And, uh, <laughs> and, and Jane Bless joined the live chat and said, oh, don't be mean like that. While, the, while Jamie, uh, Jethro and I were, 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 were giggling quite a lot um, for a couple of minutes uh, at that juncture. So that's that's the top moment in the sort of live live chat, I, I guess. There was a few other moments, a squirrel interrupting Isabel during a live stream. That was amusing. <laughs> of course, Mario's dog has made one or two entrance uh, entries. That's always amusing. Um, being uh, half drunk, I, I would never say I've been beyond half. I, I've been on the way, but being half <laughs> drunk during a stream, I think for Miami was was fun. Um, any memories for you, for either of you two, by the way? Any sort of giggles and, and funny moments? I mean, looking back, the Wimbledon sound not working was not funny at the time, but it's one of those where you look back with amusement. You look back on it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it happened, and, and that's how it is. I um, think, for me, the U.S. Open was just the most fun. I think that's when I got to know a lot of the chat. Uh-huh and talking to people and that was fun the the us open live chat series or even doing the, you know my daily videos that was yeah. fun that was a no, really nice that. moment yeah appreciate that a lot and and, yeah. and those videos were, were were great things to lean on at, at various points and even having you come on did you come on or were we just leaning on your tweets when the when the people stuck their feet to the ground? Did you come on in that little moment? Oh, you know what? No, I didn't come on for that one. But I was like just chatting in the live chat and mm, um, mm, sending mm. photos and, and stuff. And I, I certainly shared a couple of your tweets during that. But um, yeah. I know you came on a couple of times live, maybe just before the men's final. Did you come on there? Yes, I remember. Was it? No, I also came on just before Coco's match. And oh, the women's final. Right, and predicted that Sabalenka was going to win, or she was my pick to win. Um, and also, I, will, I won't forget it because I also just almost got hit in the face by a door as I was streaming because oh. I wasn't looking, and someone just went whack, and I almost got hit in the face, but it was fun. Um, Dave, yeah, just two more predictions we, we, before we move on from this question and look towards the next set, uh, and also yeah. the other three remaining questions. We've got uh, Damien, do you know what I'm going to say? No. Okay, moments of, of this year, prediction moment, I guess, have got to mention. A no, moment. come on. I'm, yeah. oh, I didn't... You like it, Damien. I, know. I don't. I don't. You don't? I don't. Really I haven't do. heard it. I'm gonna Tell me. Go on, Anastasia. I haven't heard it. Tell me. Go on, Damien. Do you want to say it, Damien? No, because it was, it was more in line with what you said earlier. So, like this is a player who could basically beat anyone right so like you said that Jian Zhang has a better chance than Olga Danilovic right uh, yeah but I'm saying it after the match but uh, but even that you went much bigger than that I I said mm. that but that's not me predicting that that Zhang, uh, Zhang is going to win you didn't go full-on predict but you sort of stopped I forget who it was maybe in conversation before the Marajan Joko uh Marajan uh Alcaraz match in Rome and say, Mario, I think, but I'm not sure. I think he might win. Thank you, Sean. Much appreciate. Going to watch the Arsenal match. Uh, what's the score in the Arsenal, Arsenal match? I saw somebody talking about it in the in the live chat, Jake, earlier. But not that I have any interest in football anymore because my team were terrible. We lost again yesterday. Uh, I was actually in the air uh, on a plane and I was managing to be in a WhatsApp group and find out, keep up with the score because I couldn't have much more internet connection than that. But we lost on Nottingham Forest, there, there, but that's certainly not a highlight of my year. Um, yeah, but you went much bigger on on Madashan and you start you got a few very kind tweets coming your way saying, "Wow, look at this, this guru, this this." Yeah, I remember one from a guy from the I forget his name now from a British newspaper who was like bigging you up on on Twitter. Guy with a beard, 
His name is. I don't even remember that, but um, yeah, yeah no, I, I, I honestly, I, I say that all the time about lower ranked players, and then sometimes they win, sometimes they don't. So I think I that, think, I think that too. I think that's at least all possible. Though. They're not all. I think it's all... overrated. I think it's certainly overrated. I, yeah, I'm just a person not... who's never surprised watching tennis, you know, because I always think that well, this could happen, you know, and then very, very rarely. Actually, oh, well, you know what was a better prediction? A better prediction: Australian Open. Rybakina Świątek. We were sitting down and predicting every single match of the round round four just before we left Bonn. And um, I said that there's no way that Świątek beats Rybakina. I'm 100% sure. And I think that was a better prediction than Maroshan Alcaraz, just because Maroshan wasn't a clear prediction. And no one would ever predict that Maroshan beats Mar Alcaraz. You can only really predict that, you know, he might trouble him. But I think that was better. Uh, although, no, I, I still don't care about predictions. Generally speaking, I don't have a favorite moment of live chatting either. My my if my equivalent to that back in one is um, uh, Von Drusova Pagula quarterfinal Wimbledon. I, I was just like, Pagula's not winning this. And, and but that was 4-1 is... in the third. And that's I know, I know. I, but listen, the result is the result, Damien. It, you're going to go back to the Australian Open 2022 mm, and say you yes. got your prediction like you said, maybe yeah. straight sets. I did. <laughs> I, I, I seriously think I did. Yeah. I, I know what you mean, but but with that with that Pagula one, I don't know. There's still an element of, you know, you could say to me that she's up a break or that she nearly won a double break up before the rain uh, interrupted, but yeah. Um, things worked out at least in terms of that prediction, but of course I got lots on. But Sabalenka and Alcaraz, I predicted them to win the two slams that they won this year. But then I did have final jitters on the day of Alcaraz, Djokovic, and also Sabalenka Rabakina, where if you'd if you'd have given me a chance to get out of those predictions, I might have taken it. Particularly um, after Djokovic won that first. By the way, just just one thing, I don't have a favorite moment, as I said. I mean, nothing just comes to mind. But I was thinking about this today that all of these people that I met in Bonn, because as you said, like maybe yesterday or so, somewhere, that I started doing this in like October, November. And I still didn't like get to meet the people in the chat. I didn't remember any of them by the time we had that Bond trip. And that's where I met a lot of these guys like Ghosty, Jane, Sean, who's here, Matthew, and etc. And uh, I love it that they're still all here. Like, yeah. you, you enter the stream and they're still all here. It's the same people that I've been talking to since January. And, you know, I feel like I've actually built up a strong connection with them through yeah. this resource. Yeah. That that is a really cool point. I've never thought about that. This, I guess that's for all of us, you know, to take some credit from that. And, and I don't want to be too much self-congratulatory in this respect. But I do think that's quite a cool thing that normally I, I've been on other channels and there's nothing wrong with it. It's quite normal that people join and then you just never see them again. I can't think of anyone off the top of my head who's been a regular, if you like, and we've not seen them. I mean, this that is normal. People end up getting lives and things change and all sorts of things. But I can't think of, from the 10 regulars, if you like, over the last 15, 16 months, I can't think of anyone who's still not a regular, whether it be Jane, Ghosty, Matthew, Sean, um, Jake. I can't think of anyone, and I'm probably missing a few names off that regular list, who's not still a regular. Anastasia. <laughs> yeah. I'm cheating with Anastasia. I've, I've, I've brought her on board. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I can't think of anyone who's uh, not. And I know that, by the way, I know that they all sort of dip into other streams and that's fine. I, I'd rather have them dip into us uh, and, and dip into other other similar streams as well and, and, and not have them at all, for sure. Yeah. What do you think of um, Oaken's question here? I was figuring it's mostly rest and also just the fact that most tournaments he does enter, he goes super deep in them. You know, he plays a lot of tennis even though maybe the tournament count is not high. I've kind of addressed this before, but I know Okan is quite new, but I'll let Damien go for it. What was the question? Because I was just replying <laughs> to someone else <laughs> giving me a question. Why doesn't Karas play him a, play him a warm up before the Australian Open? Um, yeah, I mean, he's done it before and it's worked out okay. I guess it's just a different idea in terms of off-season preparation. Maybe they needed more time. I know he's played the exhibition where he beat Novak, so that was already a bit of a warm up, right? Like it, we we cannot really say that he hasn't warmed up. I mean, he played Novak for three sets, and they were absolutely going for it. So um, I don't know if he loses round one or round two, we're not going to escape this topic for sure. Like everyone is no, that's why, rambling yeah. on about this, and and rightfully so. 
like if, if he loses early at the Australian Open, if the Australian Open doesn't go right for him, for him, we're gonna be talking about this. But I don't know. I guess they just have a different idea in terms of the preparation. Without seeing the end result, I don't feel like we can really judge that. And and one year they've already done it, 2022, and he looked great at the Australian Open. So. Of course, yeah, then the open. standards were also different. So a third round loss in five sets to Berrettini was considered amazing already. But uh, yeah. right now it would be trash, absolutely awful. But that was a of fifth course, set it's going to be different. Think, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fifth yeah. set tiebreak. Um, yeah, right. But uh, actually, I think you're absolutely right as well with that threshold of one or two. If he gets to the third round and lose, you probably wouldn't say it because he's now had those two matches. I mean, certainly if he gets to the second week, then then that argument goes. Um, uh, because he's had enough matches under the belt. I, I've got some other points on that as well. I think that um, they 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 kind of do pick and choose events. They are a little bit more uh, ambitious or, or, or changing around the calendar a little bit compared to, say, someone like Tsitsipas who just plays every event, and I think that's also a mistake. But, you know, we all remember him skipping Rome uh, a couple of years ago in the build-up of the French Open. And I guess you could look at back on that one because he went out in the quarters to, to Zverev, but I don't think that that. Would no, have been a, been if a you win both Madrid it. and Barcelona, it's 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 okay to skip Rome for sure. But actually, he won Madrid and Barcelona this year and did play Rome uh, and lost early, being pretty tired. And lost early, yeah, yeah. And uh, much that we've that, already mentioned it here. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that impacted him at all, though, at the, at the French in terms of losing early or. No, playing no, no. Um. The, the other thing, though, the final thing, the biggest thing that I've been talking about in, in recent weeks, actually, is more reflecting on that decision and speculating. That's a lovely winner down the line there from, from Zhang, by the way, to get the break and two love. Um, the, and speculating that I wonder if there are some regrets regarding Alcaraz and the way they managed the second half of the year. And I can mention Hotman Cup, which still doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, him playing that. I don't think it would have impacted him that much because I think he just played one maybe doubles match there. Um, but then then uh, the North American swing, I wonder if, I wonder, and it's pure speculation right now, I wonder if if, if he can, whether he'll skip can, uh, Canada. And, I just by the way, that, oh, yeah. By, by, um, by That's the a time, surprising comment. By, my guess is that he realized that he's not a hardcore guy. When it yeah. comes to Alcaraz, I mean, I would actually say an argument maybe say the better. other way around. Yeah, he could be actually way better on, on a slower hard court, not not like Turin, but you know, Indian yeah, Wells, like, for example, uh, that Indian might Wells. be his best event in the world right now. Yeah, if Indian Wells was a slam, I might make him a favorite for it. Mm. And for sure, maybe like he, you, we throw it. we throw everyone into Indian Wells right now. Alcaraz is a favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, if everyone's form is at the same level, if you like, and everyone's yeah. going in. A, on an even keel right um, now i mean literally tomorrow and yeah even right now yeah, yeah i just yeah. think his form is a little bit questionable and, oh, and maybe so some... good from i, I don't think we can there. talk about Sorry. the form really you know right now because no one no one has form at the moment <laughs> okay i'm still thinking of the indoor season and, but you're yeah. right that was lovely volley there and uh from, from so good. yeah um okay are you ready for my third question yeah, go on then. What? So some of my favorite talking tennis moments were from when John was live in person at tournaments. They were just the best. I think I enjoyed Davis Cup way better because you were at every press conference and you do live streams and it was it was really fun. What are your hopes for tournaments that you would love to, if the world was your oyster, and you could realistically, what, where would Talking Tennis Live, Talking Tennis Live, go mm -hmm. this year? Great question, and one I'm, I'm really pleased to answer. I, I'm actually going to fuse actually questions four and three in together, so I'm leading. Another great memory was basically all the live streams I did in Malaga, because I, but then I was at that sweet spot of drinking as well, because I'd had like. There we go, they're getting excited. I don't, know if that's your, I don't know if that's your question that this prompted those uh, fireworks. Nothing to do with New Year's Eve. But um, the, um, the, the live streams... Are they like shooting it right outside your window or what the hell happened? Yeah, they're, they're, they're not, yeah. Because yeah. I also have fireworks, but they're like, you know, 10 yeah. times quieter. I mean, they're obviously pretty close. 
Um, but it's daylight, so I guess you can't see anything. But I remember being here uh, about 10 years ago and seeing fireworks during the day because uh, of a football match that was going on. But that, that's a conversation for another time. But um, uh, they've held for three love, which is huge because that was on the Zhang, uh, Zhang Sir. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I love doing the live stream sort of like about midnight 1 a.m. in Malaga. We went off from some random conversations, I remember, after a Turin semi, for example, and also doing one with you uh, as well uh, uh, on bar, a Saturday yeah. night, I think, from a bar. And the reason I liked it is I was at that sweet spot. I'd had two or three beers. I was super relaxed. Carlos as well joined us like next to yeah. each other for one, for one live stream. So I really enjoyed that. And that leads me into your question. Listen, I, 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 I well, this, 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 it's difficult to answer because I, I would love, I would love to get a slam next year or this, yeah, next year, 2024. But, um, but you can't, you don't get with all as Damien knows more than anyone. The further down the food chain you go, the more access you get, and the more fun you can have, and the more pleasure and face-to-face -face stuff you can do and and you you're allowed to take your camera everywhere and stick your mic in various people's faces and and say mm -hmm. can i speak to the ex player i mean uh, dugas aziz basically happened or aziz dugas basically happened because someone approached kind of approached me and said do i want to talk to him and i was like yeah sure whereas that's never going to happen at 90 percent atpd atpd i don't know why i said that <laughs> atp and wta uh, uh events so but but just yeah just doing more and and I, I would love to get one or both of Rio and Buenos Aires and mm. um, we'll see I mean listen I'm going to apply and I will be in the cities for both of those tournaments I will apply and you would think uh, given the fact that the resume of 2023 has been pretty good 250s 500s and 1000s you would think a 250 and a 500 one of them would come in. But you never know. Tennis is, is I mean, I just tell them you have 5K subs and that yes. instantly brings yeah. you into yeah. every and single I'll, I'll, I'll pick up your prediction on Madashan, but you don't need to know about that. <laughs> <laughs> <in an email. laughs> You're like talking tennis, call them first. <laughs> you know what? I'm actually going to mention to Rio definitely, but I think Buenos Aires as well. I will just mention in the application, like something about Cam Nori. Just being British, that, that's one thing that I just could be a thing. Oh, we're a, we've got a huge Cam Nori audience. So, um, you know, being from the UK. And I'm going to come all the way from London to South America to see. He has such huge him. lungs. Oh. <laughs> see his huge lungs. And he I mean, bikes to Wimbledon. Andy, he bikes to Wimbledon. He bikes well. to Wimbledon. Liam Brody, the Liam Brody channel. Liam Brody <laughs> weekly. Yeah. Um, so that'll be something. So, uh, yeah, I mean, just that would be. Because I think that's a bit more, more. I mean, we might not get a slam this year, Anastasia, so that's fine. But just all the same events that we did again, plus a couple more, would, would be great progress. Um, okay. And Davis Cup. And I'm getting a little better as well at trying to find microphone positions and stuff. Sometimes the sound isn't always great, but every event I find the sweet spot to put the microphone in for the player to be heard. Uh, but it, So the beginning of the, the week or the beginning of the fortnight, Maybe the audio isn't ideal, but it gets better. You know, having a great time at Estoril, I hope to repeat that too. And and so on and so forth. Hopefully that's kind of addressed it. But yeah, just more the same plus another couple of events. And if, if it's a slam, if it's if it's the French Open or Wimbledon or New York, one of those three, I haven't didn't even apply for Australia just because of the distance and cost. But um Yeah, yeah. Australia's a big commitment. Yeah. I would do it if there was, if I thought it could be a bit more, like if they started giving me access and a bit more freedom with the camera, but actually Australia is probably the strictest of all the slams, having spoken to other journalists just in terms of what they do, you know, mm. we, you know this, it's, it's almost the Orwellian slam. I mean, it's also the best, I think, for the players because they love that, that, that feel that they get there. And, and a lot of people talk about it being the happy slam and all the rest of it, but I think it's also the strictest. Um, so that's that. I, I hope that's kind of addressed you at your question. But you know, me doing a live uh, event from Rio Buenos Aires would be cool. Yeah, I have two questions left, right? Because I asked three. Okay. Because you always have to. So this is the fourth question. You always have to look back yeah. at what you could do differently, or maybe not a fun moment that you'd like to improve. But what was yeah. maybe to put it in a more positive light? What would you do differently? um 
from something you did in 2023 for the channel? Like, what would you change? What would you improve? How about that? What would you improve? Yeah. Um, for 2023. Yeah. That's the question. What would you improve? I mean, if I could become more efficient and what do I mean by that? I mean, let, let's say in Madrid, you know, I'm spending a lot of time doing thumbnails or, or, or trying to get, um, uh, interviews out there and editing and just trying to get that whole process to be more efficient so I can enjoy the tennis. And, and here's something which is beyond my control, but, but is, it would also factor in, and it is related to sort of access. You know, I, I do understand why sometimes journalists can be in press conference and not seem as prepared as they could because you just, things get thrust upon you and you don't know. You know, a press conference, you're in the middle of dinner and then suddenly someone's got to press. But more than that, I would love to go and watch a match and know I'm going to be interviewing one of the two players afterwards. And I can be, because in Madrid, for example, I would go and watch three matches, be fully invested in them and not get to speak to any of the players afterwards. And then suddenly, randomly, you, you're being invited to speak to someone whose match maybe you've not really seen, or you're going to a press conference. Uh, there's no excuse for not knowing the result. I'm not forgiving that. We've got a double break here now for, for the Chinese. So they are no. set to force a... Yeah, and side. this time, Xi Jinping poached well. Uh, I mean, the, the point yeah, actually really still kept, kept going, but yeah. this time he managed to switch sides swiftly. Really good. But, but that, that is something I would like to get better at. It's just efficiency of my time so <laughs> yeah. that therefore I can, A, enjoy the tennis a bit more. And, and, and yeah, and so I, I don't know if that's fully addressed it, but there's loads of other things that I need to get better at, you know, and I have got better at, but still have room to improve production of being one of them and, you know, getting that. But that, that's also investment as well. Um, yeah. That's usually what it is. It's like you have it's to. It's mainly investment, actually, more than yeah. anything else. You know, you, you, you give me a couple of thousand dollars and, and that, that thing that happened at Wimbledon doesn't happen, but I'm doing it on a, on a, on a, on a, on a tight budget and I'm trying shoestring, to. Shoestring, yeah, shoestring budget. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's probably still better than some budgets, but, but yeah, it, yeah. that's what it is. Um, yeah, so just getting better at those, those technical things, which I am getting better at, but more importantly, it's just saving time because. You spend 15, 20 minutes on making a thumbnail. You spend, you know, another half an hour, hour editing a video and 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 you do that two or three times a day and try and watch some tennis and attend the press conferences and ask the right questions. Yeah. yeah. And, I, you know, I think that's actually a big point to, to bring up because I think, you know, it's very easy for an audience member to think, oh, you know, it's just a camera and microphone and, you know, you point it at something and you go but it's a full-time gig sometimes. It's a full job being able to um, produce these videos and, and run a channel. You're, you're sort of the CEO of this media company called Talking Tennis and it's, it's a big job and it's not easy. And it's props to you that, you know, here it is at 5,000 organic subscribers other than <laughs> all the skullduggery that we do. <laughs> <laughs> Probably about 27 real ones. And I, I added yes. two today, so I guess it's yeah, exactly. 499. So yeah. We still don't have a true 5K. <laughs> no, I'm sure we I mean, if you took but, all them off, we've probably gone about 3,000. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a tough gig to be consistent with something and always show up and be there um one of the and, easiest bits is once you've got the preparation done especially one of the yeah. easiest bits is sitting down with Aziz Dugas for 20 minutes or Liam Brody uh or yeah or, or Laura Siegmund or standing up that's actually the easiest bit in a way if you've watched mm -hmm. the match and you know what you're going to touch out about and just go in the directions it's almost the easiest part the hardest bit is every other bit involved. yeah all the boring bits all the boring bits yeah and if i could eliminate some of those and and, and that would that would uh, make the whole experience even more ple ple pleasurable um i would like as well and it is sort of related to your question i'd like to have one or two people join me maybe an esther real damien if you fancied it but i know 250 sort of a bit too big for you i know in terms of you like your challenges but it's we'll, really we'll see when it is, you know, in the calendar. Maybe. 30th of March to the 6th or 7th of April, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, I, I have the, to see the tournament, calendar but as well. I think I can get two passes. I don't know about any other tournament um, because I've only ever had one at the others. And I asked for two for Birmingham and they gave me two, but they said I couldn't have two people on site at the same time. For Birmingham. Mm. So we had, 
we had Jamie and and uh, Nick there. Um, but they were, I think it was because we were sort of newbies. I think this year we might, because on the day of the final, Nick was telling me that there wasn't much of a media presence there, despite it being the final, because the big moment was Venus on the first day, I think. Um, and winning that three set that she had, I think, against uh, Camilla Georgie. And that was the, the crazy day at Birmingham. But um, I think it was also us being newbies. I think they were just like, wow. Wow, five love. Team yeah, I know. China. Here I know. we go. Yeah. Really good, the second set for them. Um, okay. One more question, right? One more question. Um, because I mean, you kind of answered it through the other four questions in a way. Um, but other than hitting like 10,000 subscribers and going to more live events and what are your hopes and dreams for talking tennis in 2024? Um, just more people, more, more, listen, I, th there is a risk when you, you know, you're, 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 you're chatting to someone on Twitter and the next minute you're having them on a live stream and the next minute you're uh, sending them to a tournament. So there is trust in that. And, and the, it, you know, I don't want to get that phone call that says, by the way, you're, you're banned from this tournament. You're never coming back. Cause one of your, your people asked a, a, a silly question at press conference. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, but yeah, just, just. It's bigger and, and more and, and like, like you say it's not just about the 10 cases you know i look at you know having one or two people added to that whatsapp group you're just in recently and i look at that as making the whole thing better that's almost as it's almost more if you said to me right now you know five thousand more subscribers or five excellent members of the team added it would be five excellent members of the team ideally in different parts of the world yeah it would be great to have one right now in brisbane and then suddenly getting a press pass for example it's going to be a bit too short notice i think given the fact the tournament has basically started but um so that isn't gonna happen but let's let's just say if you said three weeks ago you know somebody cool in brisbane wants to wants to join that i'll be like yep that would be pretty cool and uh, we'll see if we can get uh by the way that would have been the most wanted press pass in town overnight after a certain oh yeah so yeah it might not happen but but um yeah that's 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 it. So so if you said to me five cool members joining the team and and doing everything that the other 20, 25 people do, that would be great. Nice. World domination. Talking tennis, world domination. I was in the Uber I got yesterday, I was sort of staring into the sky going, talking football, talking <laughs> politics, talking news, talking physics. Although talking physics would be I would be having nothing to do with that. I, don't I would I would take you up on talking physics. I would. There you go. You I would, can you I would... be in charge of that branch. We can yeah. do talking darts. Talking darts, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, I could learn that a little quicker than talking physics. Wait, Damien, was that you who I saw some sort of dart sort of video on my on my Twitter? You know. Probably not. Probably not. Although. I don't know. Oh really? Because I was like, why am I being served darts? I don't. I it don't wasn't. Know. I mean, as an as an like a retweet or what? It it was like um, no, it was just someone showing. I guess there was some sort of competition, and it was like sudden death. I don't even know anything about darts, so I didn't. Yeah, but was know. I like like why did it? Why did it show? That's up? why. Was it yeah, I don't know, but I get. So, for example, because I follow Nick. I get a lot of F1 stuff now, mm -hmm. even though I don't follow F1 or anything. So I was wondering who I follow that loves darts. No, it, it's possible uh, because I sometimes <laughs> comment on stuff. I haven't tweeted about darts ever. I don't think so. But oh, okay. I do sometimes comment on stuff. So you might get it shown on your feed. Yeah, yeah maybe. Maybe. But I think um, I retweeted were... a post once when this Polish uh... darter won a, won a big event. But that was in uh, October, maybe. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, sometimes I will comment on something, so you might actually get it on your feed accidentally. Yes, yeah. I am a big darts fan. Yes, cool. Um, well, John, that was great answers to cool. the five questions that I had for the 5,000 followers, and for the 60 people or so that are, are watching us right now, remember to like and subscribe. You know, thank how you. many likes do we have on this? Like, let's go. Yeah, no idea. Um, but but thank you, yeah. Someone in the live chat can tell us, or I could just go on YouTube right now. This is actually quite yeah. a good moment to sort of maybe, maybe have a look at the match because we are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I have been watching. I will say that I just haven't been talking about it. But um, now we're going to be in the 
probable deciding set tiebreak. Um, although that will mean uh, these guys having to hold in 15-30 suggests they might not. Um, but they have got two breaks in the in the pocket. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice four. They're, they're to playing really well. I love up. I love the 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 sort of zang and zang um <laughs> yeah. Like, dynamic, whatever. Dynamic. It's it's really fun. It's really good. Um I think uh, uh -huh. I would just say, I, I, this whole year, I think I'm going to be talking about the Olympics until it actually happens, but it would make a great Olympic pairing. <laughs> um, I think uh, the people at like the ATP WTA have noticed that too, that they're great dynamic, they're great vibe, and um, they have okay. even like posted videos already with them, you know, just talking about whatever, really. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, they are, of course, tennis is trying to sell itself in China more and more because there's a billion people there and you kind yeah. of have to, and there's a lot of money there. And these two are probably like the main marketable stars, right? I mean, maybe Jerry Shang, if he's ever, if he reaches that level, but like in, in terms of the women's game, it's definitely Kim Van in terms of the men's right now, it's definitely Jin Shang. So, uh, I feel like, yeah, uh, the, they work really well together and as a sort of a pair that can really sell tennis to the masses in China, maybe. I guess that's what they're hoping for. And then you can see why they're both like super explosive on the court. Yeah. And at the same time also have like fun personalities. No like real um, controversy can get out of these two. Like it's just mm -hmm. really fun. Yeah. The Olympics, a couple of different takes on it. Sometimes you've got to be careful with these takes because sometimes it's paying lip service. Sometimes it's because of the fame of the question or the environment or the person who asked it. But um, uh, Alcaraz, I think, if I understood it correctly, put uh, Olympics as his sort of top goal. Uh, yeah. In the head of another slam. However, Casper Ruud, and the, the question was framed favorably uh, by Jamie, funny enough, at the UTS recently. Uh, he said something like, oh, your father, I think, played for Norway in the Olympics. So then you expect the very favorable answer from, from Casper Ruud. But actually, he just said, ultimately, in the question, as long as you paid attention, basically said, it slams. It slams still for me that um, that's number one. And, and then, Fritz yeah, recently they, said something about it, right? That um, he would who? like the ranking points. Taylor Fritz, not oh, Taylor yeah, Swift, yeah, yeah. not Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, did you see that tweet? Would, uh, <laughs> it's kind of one of the comments. Yeah, you, 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 you showed it on the screen. Yeah, that's I why did, I mentioned yeah, yeah. it because I know that you will know what I'm referring to. But yeah, Fritz basically said that he would like ranking points to have some sort of an incentive because there's no like only the medal matters there. Like, but um, I think it's very different in, in different countries. Like the U.S. clearly doesn't care too much about the Olympics, even okay. though they still have a lot of medals there. But like the, the yeah. importance of a, a gold medal, for example, isn't huge. But I feel like especially here that, in right. Europe, in a lot of these, you know, Eastern or Western or even mid or middle countries, you generally tend to favor the Olympics quite a lot. Maybe not in tennis, of course, because in tennis they do sort of play um, you know that they are behind the slams for sure. However, I feel like the the, the medal is still huge for us. Like whatever yeah. sport that is in, like I could win a medal in taekwondo, and it would still be such an applauded achievement. So uh, yeah. I think it's very different depending on where you were born. Uh, but like, Norway, say... Norway is kind of surprising though with Casper. Just go on. Just one second, Anna. Says it. Big thank you to Okan, by the way. It's one of two or three new people I've seen in the chat today, and it's been uh, it's great to have you on board. And just ignore an Erlan, like <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't, don't even pay uh, attention to it. I um I was just gonna. I guess it it also depends on how you grew up. Like growing up, like the big mainly because I I also participated in track. You know, the big events for me were tennis and then the Olympics, and for me. It happens so, you know, infrequently. It's every four years. It seemed like as an athlete, that was your goal. Oh, it's a lot like of to, sports. Yeah, yeah. Right. To just like train all for all four years. You're just training and you're building yeah. so that you can qualify to represent your country at the Olympics and then hopefully win a gold medal. So for those 10 um, seconds, I, if you're a hundred meter runner, it's insane, isn't it? That you, yeah. a lifetime's training is about 10 seconds. I mean, that literally. Yeah. Like, and then you're, ooh, oh, sorry, this replays. I um, hope I'm not doing you a disservice here, Anastasia, but I'm guessing a little longer than 10 seconds for hundred meters. 
Oh. <laughs> 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 By the way, you're coming someone who's probably the worst. 11, 11, 11. <laughs> I, you know, I'll even give 11. you 11 and a half, but I'm definitely not sub 10 second, you know, yeah. 100 meters. Well, no woman is sub 10 That would be unheard of for a woman. <laughs> yeah, 1049, yeah. uh, Flo, Flo Flores Joe. Griffith Joyner. Yeah. A lot of question yeah. marks about that, that record. Yeah, that yeah, that definitely. By the but, way, that um, was a great point from Danilovic. Like, I love the Jan's reaction as well. Exclamation from her. Everyone literally on the court was like, what the hell has just happened, including the <laughs> yeah. opponents? And um, I guess that kind of speaks about Danilovic not being that great the whole match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the point was amazing, absolutely. Just, just uh, yeah, redirecting that forehand down the line with a super precision. She's been quite frustrated. It's, it's, it's interesting watching her dynamic with, with Novak because he seems such like a it's almost like a teaching moment for him where, you know, you'll see him in some moments, you know, sort of show her strokes and things like that. But um, it's been in, she, she's definitely been getting frustrated throughout the match, which I'm like, just hold it together for your team. Hold it together. I see what you mean about Troitsky now. It's just about the belly, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I saw him. In, I think it might even be Christmas because I saw him close up in Maybe. in Malaga and I didn't didn't notice it so much. But here, I'm. I think it might have just been Christmas. Maybe we've all gained a bit. On <laughs> I Christmas, mean, I so. definitely did. In the four, I went back to the UK for a couple of days, and yeah, I, I then hit the gym hard in the last three or four days, and and that was necessary just to get back on an even keel. Uh, anyway, talking of even kills, we are on serve here, although there have been a couple of breaks, but we're at 2-3 with King Wenjing serving. And this basically would put China into the next round. Yes. And, and China then, is in, but they might also be in with a loss. It's actually very They possible, could be in with a... Yeah. Did, did, what was the score against the Czech Republic? Was it 2-0 or 2-1? 3-0. And, zero, and, zero, and, zero, and, that's, why, yeah, and that's why I mean that, yeah, they have a great chance. That is the combination you need. You need if you're going to do it with a win and a loss, it needs to be three zero and one two. Basically. Three zero one two is is the perfect thing, and unless yeah. any other team has it, then they will be through anyway. But of course, we will learn that later. If it's, but, if, it's, if another well, team has it, do you any other base... team in the same in the same city as well, right? So it's oh, just same, three... it has to be the oh yeah, because it's the best. Yeah, how yeah, many it's groups the best in out cities? of the, the cities? Three get three groups per city. So it's going to be just three teams. So if you are three zero and one two. It's likely that you're going to get through anyway. Of, of course, there's also the chance that they lose today and then Serbia loses to Czech Republic. And then there's mm. a huge mess. But then they would also be favored because they have 3 0 and 1 2 again. Yeah, because so, they could then finish top of the group. Yeah. Yeah. But that, of course, the best possible option is That's just a to finish. Very impressive first. score line. That 3 0 is very impressive. Yeah, uh, I mean, Jin Zhang won from a set down, I think. Kim Zhang won in free, but not from a set down. And of course, they absolutely thrashed them in mixed doubles. In the doubles, yeah. Um, Dan Ran is saying, Carly just changed his name to Damien. I don't know if that's referring to Carlos the Magician, who met Vanch, by the way, um, in Seville recently, which is pretty cool. Even that, those little things. I mean, I know Carlos, uh, these are all individuals who've built their own, certainly, rep reputations in tennis and probably would have met each other. Uh, that warms my heart when I see a picture selfie of those two in, in Seville. Yeah, I don't know if they actually interacted on Talking Tennis, to be honest. No, I don't did they? think I don't so. Think so. Did, no. right. But the, 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 the thought at the back of the mind, I won, I don't know if Carlos came on Talking Tennis during that period, then made Vanch think, oh, he'd be a great guest for the Ego and Carlos show. Then, of course, he comes on the Ego and Carlos show, and then that, that sort of means that they're more, more. I don't think so, because Vanch, when he uh, was trying to pitch the idea of inviting Carlos to me, he was like sort of explaining to me who Carlos is. And so so that would mean that he wasn't on the You knew him probably before where, any of us, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that, that's why that's why I told him, no, you don't have to do that. I know Carlos very well. Yeah. But but um, that's why I think Vanch probably did, wasn't too familiar with what Carlos was doing here because on most okay. of the streams where Carlos was, I was also there, right? Yeah. Um, that when Carl, when Star, I first met Carlos, Norwegian he left. King Carl. I would say I yeah. met about five people this year. And the, the first or second thing they said to me is something like Damien. Um, two That's Polish good. people up there. Yeah, I yeah. mean, Polish, Polish is kind of self-explanatory. That's yeah, good, but, but I wish good. it's sort of, you know, that recognition turned into um, yeah, something profitable for me but as well. Car yeah, Carlos, I think, uh, maybe as well, Carlos and I had semi-crossed paths in a way 
Uh, yes, we had. Yeah, because a year ago, actually, I already had his WhatsApp number because um, I was texting him about uh, Alcaraz Djokovic in Madrid. Um, so we'd sort of semi sort of knew each other, if you like, in that respect. And I had invited him on the show, but not had him on the show uh, a year ago. But then as soon as I met him in Madrid, it was like he actually said to me, he said, Carlos, and I didn't know who he was at first. And he's like, yeah. And I said, oh, OK, cool. Nice to meet you. And he said, yeah, and Damien. I was like, oh, you have Damien on your show. And I was like, that. So it was like the second thing he said to me, basically. Yeah, um, because he was doing the, um, how do you call it? Like the stat tracking or whatever, right? For yeah, data yeah. scouting for for the tournament, yeah. Mm. Um, anyway, I mean, this is unraveling very quickly for it is. the yeah. Serbian team. I mean, they need at least this next point from Zhang on his serve, albeit it's against Djokovic. Excellent return from Novak. Not enough to win the point yet. We've now got a very tricky smash for... Uh, um, they've won the point seven four. Yeah, but that was risky. This could have been eight three easily. But still, yeah. it's two serves for Novak now. So, I I, I definitely wish though that um, the Chinese team, even if they lo lose this, they they make the semis. Like they they've definitely you know earned it. They deserve it. Yeah, they've they've played really well these two matches. I, yeah. it, I wasn't expecting it. It's it's very similar to the JB team. Um, Sorry, not JB. What am I saying? GB team. GB, yeah. um, I mean, I was not expecting Katie Bolter to Katie Bolter. <laughs> that are, you, are you UK in Sydney or in Perth? They in are the in. That was the first day of action, so it has to be Perth because Perth started oh, the day. Be, earlier. So that because yeah. Britain are in that potential, you know, best because they lost two one, but they'll now need to win three zero there. Yeah, I mean, but that... it depends on Australia as well. I mean, Australia is going to play um, the US now. But no, but Great Britain cannot finish. No, Do Great Britain can. Great Britain cannot finish second, right? Because they lost both matches. Oh, they've already played twice. Have they? Yeah, they played twice already. Yeah, oh, I mean, they so played that, on the first that, day that, with that. Australia, and now they played with the US, and they lost both oh, matches. Cool. So, so it's, be it's yeah. between Australia and the US to, to be. Who was captain of Britain this year, by the way? Uh... I know last year was Tim Henman because it was almost comical. Sorry, Tim. I'm sure you're a nice <laughs> guy. But I don't know. I, I mean, obviously, no, the, the wasn't... instant answer I wanted to say Leon Smith, but no, he's Davis Cup, not this. I don't know. Yeah. No, I'm not sure. I possibly should know. But then I didn't even know that they were out. So there we go. Tennis knowledge. Hey. Uh, Djokovic here serving at 8 4 now. I mean, it's a very long way back for China right now. Mm. Oh, not a bad return. Forehand from Zhang. Volley from Zhang. Oh, I see. I had a feeling that China lost the point from your reaction, Damien. Colin is Beecher is the is the captain. Who? Colin Beecher. Who's Sorry, that? Colin. Sorry, I don't know. Oh, I mean, see, he that's was what I thought. I thought. I thought. Great Britain beat Australia. Yeah, but because <laughs> Katie Bolter beat. Um, no, but but wasn't it just Matthew Ebden and Storm Hunter? Oh no, because they won both singles. Oh, you're right. You're right. Okay, I'm. I'm, I'm yeah, because I was like, I feel like I feel like they're still in yeah, it. Yeah, I just I just remembered I just remembered the mixed, and I was like, Australia won the mix, so they won the tie. No, never yeah. mind then. Then it's, then it's a mess. Up, two, one, one, two, but, um, everyone yeah. can make it. Everyone can make it. Yeah, well, let's just put everyone yeah. in. It can everyone. go down to games percentage even, yeah. Because what because, I was thinking, I was like, uh -huh. we need... We need... Um, no, 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 no you're right. Yeah. Um, Alex de Minor, I don't know. Alex de Minor, yes. We need him to come through for Katie Bolter. He needs to be... He needs to be... <laughs> <laughs> That's no, no, I, I was just thinking because they lost the mixed and I I just figured, okay, so it's, it was probably both mixed, but no, it's actually not. 5-9, by the way, and we've got match points here. I know I'm a few seconds behind you, uh, Damien, but I think Anastasia and I are about equal. Uh, in terms yes, of we are. We're equal. I'm going to talk us through this point of second serve here, Kinwen Zheng. She's probably going to go big because it's against Novak. Probably not big enough. Do a good return from Novak. Forehand from Kinwen. Zhang takes, takes charge of the point and takes charge. He does. 6-9. Six, 9-6. Nine, nine, six. Well done. Uh, I guess it's Danilovic's serve now, you know? Two two serves of Danilovic now? Yeah. Uh, 
yeah. you can try to pull it off. She's just it's big not, on not both, which is anything but I think what she was doing today in, the, in her singles match. Her first serve percentage in the first set was like 82%. Um, it's not that's impossible. Almost, it's almost a criticism in a way that you maybe you're not going big enough on your first serve. Yeah, Especially you're Sara Erani. <laughs> Sara Erani used to play like 85%, 86% yeah, in the season. Yeah. I saw her playing doubles in, in Monastir. She still does play like that, I think. Yeah. I was, sometimes you'd sort of be looking down or looking at someone. You look up and you go, oh, that's a second. Oh, no, it's a first serve. <laughs> anyway, 9-6. Uh, so still some match points in the bag, but it's going to be a second serve here for Kim Wen Jake to look at. Backhand return cross court. Of course, she uh, goes cross court. She'll go cross court again. And she'll probably keep going that way. But Novak takes charge of it. Of course he does. And it wins the match. Serbia, Serbia is wins. basically answering this one question, this event. And that question is, can you win an event having one player? Like, Can you win an event like this having just one player, literally? Probably, and, yeah. <laughs> so far, the answer is yes. But it will be tricky. Like, If they really yeah, have to rely on the mixed doubles... Pagula Fritz, I don't. I mean, I don't. Pagula, of course, doubles prowess is, is unquestionable. I don't know. I mean, what, they can like, easily beat them. Like, yeah, yeah, they could. They could yeah. just. It just. But this is a great. This was a great match today beforehand. I thought it would because we had that sort of random element of four, four players. You know, you, you'd probably in a, in a four, you'd have Djokovic, uh, Zhang, Zheng, and then bless her heart, Danilovic in that order of, of being picked, if you like. Um, so that yeah. was a nice balance. But you also had these sort of players that are all kind of random in terms of doubles court prowess. Um, and we kind of got that that match and that result in a way, because it was was close until the end. And you still didn't quite know, especially as Danilovic was trying to serve that out. And there we go. So Serbia now um, will play... Who's the other team in this group? Czech, Czech Republic. Czech Republic. Czech or whatever. And that's, yeah. so it's still not done. If Czech Republic win that... But I, I guess Czech Republic are still very much the outsiders having lost 0-3. Um, sort of. Have, I mean, Vondroshova is a big favorite over Danilovic, and then you have the mix again, so... Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's like a, it's like a freebie be for Lehechka, in a way, against Djokovic. Like, he can just go mm -hmm. all out. But then again, are you really, like, you know, thinking that Vondroshova is 100% against Danilovic? I, I thought Ghosty that Trevi Sam was sandwiched in between there, but I think that might be in a different context, Ghosty. Uh, anyway, that's as close to the line as I'm going to get. Sorry, Anastasia. No, I was just going to say, I actually think um, the way Czech, uh, the Czechia team lost um, to China, they'll be looking for something, anything, um, going into the match against Serbia. And I would not be surprised if they, if they pulled through in the end. I mean, I don't know if I don't. We haven't heard anything with of Marquetta being injured or anything. Like, right? She's fine. I don't basically. think so. I mean, she played three sets with Kinvan. It were very short sets, but she was yeah, fine. And, um, yeah. That was and also played the mixed, which was of course very short as well. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, yeah, but Marquetta so... is somebody who, you know, of course, beating Igor Roland Gauss would be an exception to this. But she's someone who can kind of beat anyone. And kind of lose to not someone outside the top fifty. Beating but Iga at Roland Garros. Pardon? Beating Iga at Roland Garros. That's what I'm saying. That's 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 the crazy. That's a crazy result. Ah, okay. Yeah. Never mind. So, I, mean, I mean, there's uh, there's no result like this in her. I mean, that's whatever. the crazy result. You know, maybe beating Serena in her pomp at Willie uh, at Wimbledon okay. or something like that. But but okay. that result aside, any other result with Marquetta is kind of like, yeah, okay, yeah, that could happen. Mm -hmm. Losing in three sets to Kinwen Cheng, yeah. It's just a, perhaps losing to Olga Danilovic would be a, 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 a shock, but anyone else inside the top 50 from number two in the world down, you know, her winning or losing, as we saw Wimbledon this year, it's just, yeah, that can happen. No? This is so Losing funny. can happen. Losing can happen, but winning? Eh. I, I'm sorry. This is just something super random because mm -hmm. this exact thing happened yesterday. But Catherine Whit Whitaker is always the person interviewing um, the winners, like the doubles winners at the end. And she did the same thing yesterday. She asked both teams a question and she went to the, the male player first. And the, that player, she did this with um, the Chinese team and the male player goes, no, no, ladies first. <laughs> and Novak yeah. just did the exact same thing. And I don't know, you would think she would have learned from yesterday considering, but... It's just an interesting 
note if you know that journalist. But anyway, moving on, yeah. carrying on. <laughs> that was just that was just a random tangent. <laughs> My brain. Any loves. Caroline Whitaker shade is very welcome with me anytime. So. <laughs> I'm just like it's so it's just it's so funny from the person it's coming from that's happening. You would think, oh, this wouldn't be this sort of tilt. And then it happened yesterday. So you think, oh, correct for today. But anyhow. A, 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 a linked tangent or a, a, a linked thing, I would say this, though, is that Matt from the, from the Tennis Podcast is one of the friendliest people I've met in the newsroom this year. Not a lot of competition for that position. I will say that because there's some unfriendly people, if you like. But um, yeah. he's in my, I, I guess this will be another sort of member for the year. He's in my sort of easily top five people to sort of just hang out with in the newsroom or, or, or you could just talk to him and there's no airs or graces. Whereas with some, uh, some of the people in the newsroom, I think they, they do think they're a little bit bigger than they probably are, but he's, he's cool. Um, uh, Damien, what you got anything to say? About what? About anything. Physics. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely. Physics, definitely not. Darts. <laughs> well, sure. I mean, tomorrow is the world championship quarterfinals, you know, there you we guys go. can can watch it. It's gonna be good fun as usual. Uh, drink a lot of alcohol today, guys. Uh, it's New Year's Eve. Actually, I believe that New Year's Eve is extremely overrated. Like it's just a party yeah. for people who don't party all year. Because I party <laughs> yeah. all year, I don't really give a damn about. I, you know, I feel very New same, similar about yeah. Christmas. Uh, give me summer, a, a barbecue in summer. Give me that any day over. Um, mm -hmm over over Christmas. although in germany it's not it is there is a highlight of christmas where you got the christmas markets but even thou overrated the germans go nuts about them and if you say to a german the german would love to sort of say say do you like the christmas market and you go yeah they're okay they think that yeah you're they're okay is, is an insult you know like, oh, no I, I like them but they, they expect you to just be enamored by them the other thing of course is cologne carnival they expect a similar response to that in seville it's by the way the same regarding their annual events as well that they get very if you don't love them anything below love is is uh, anyway, I've gone off at a tangent there. Yeah, I think you are. New Year's Eve is a bit overweight. But I probably would have disagreed with you maybe 10 or 20 years ago. But now I, you know, I understand now when my father goes to bed at 10.30. <laughs> I don't yet, but literally, like, it, it's just a made-up thing, you know. It, it, it is a made-up The only thing. people excited for New Year's Eve are the ones who don't, like, do any partying throughout the year. Here's a constructive thing as well. Grand Slams, bring us back to tennis. They are a kind of a thing that Overrated? we've made up. No. Yeah, because listen, <laughs> hear me out. If suddenly tomorrow Madrid had the most money and Madrid was the thing and it was the one tournament somehow that they got all the best players for, and they could make it something. You could just construct it. You can create a fifth slam. You can lose a slam. You can, and it is these are constructed. They are yeah, it I is mean, a concept. Uh, unpopular opinion madrid was my favorite tournament last year i mean I, that, I chose madrid randomly but i know i know that it was and it, it is an yeah. unpopular opinion. i had a lot of fun there but i can see some the of content they produced the content they produced for the oh, fan yeah. was unmatched yeah. like i didn't have to be there you know i would have loved to be in madrid for it but i didn't have to be there i felt like i was there like they, they just there was just so much for, they had a whole podcast just for just for the tournament, yeah. which is yeah. crazy. Um, yeah, produced by the whole, yeah. yeah, they produced a whole podcast for it. And I actually like how they did it because you could tell they, they did all the interviews before the tournament, but they released them throughout the tournament. Like it was very yeah. smart. That's make it easier though. But yeah. yeah, but it was a very kind of smart, I think, media um, production. And th I mean, there are bigger slams. That, I mean, the French Open was... For me the worst actually okay. i was just like i don't know what's happening you know other than just watching the tennis itself i don't think they did much of a production um so yeah i think i have you know i, I was able to go to miami in person and other than the rain it was a fun you know there was a lot of rain this year in miami so okay. there was that but other than that it was like a I mean, this question though is so subjective i will say that i mean you'll have people that just just are obsessed with wimbledon and I, yeah. I couldn't be further from that but you'll just have people that have wimbledon dear to their heart because of where they grew up and what they remember and, and all these these memories and, and and stuff you know i'm sure somebody like nick or, or or jamie for example and jack too i actually had a, a disagreement with jack about a year ago on twitter of course the best place to have a disagreement with someone is of course we know <laughs> that that very nuanced uh, space 
Um, and, and it was just basically comparing the US Open with, with Wimbledon. And, and I was very much on the on the US Open being a, a, a fan friendlier thing compared to Wimbledon. But anyway, that's a, a debate for a different time. But yeah, it's just all subjective. I mean, if you go like I have Esther Hill is dear to my heart because I had a good time there. The sun was shining. Yeah. Some people don't care about the sunshine. Yeah. Do you guys know which slum is my favorite? Which slam Thank is your you. favorite? Um, yeah. um, French? Um, wait, you? let me guess. Let four. me guess. Is it the French? I feel like it might be the French for Damien. It's a bit of a trick question because I don't have a, I don't have a favorite slam. I don't oh, have a favorite okay. week in the year either. Like it's literally just tennis every single week. And no, but the problem for me is you know? Australia, middle of the night, and all that. That's the... yeah. Like Australia is is tougher to watch, but I can't really say I enjoy it less. You know, it, it's tough to watch for sure. Yeah. That, and Djokovic's that's, dominance, that's I, I find a bit boring, but. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy mostly the qualies and the first week anyway. So the second week, I don't really care, give a care about. Uh, Ghosty was also asking what my favorite holiday is. And I'm <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I'm struggling to come up with any answer. Um, what are, what, is what it holidays in are right there? Now? Anything in summer is fine by me. If there's a, if there's a, a public holiday in summer and, and people are partying on a Wednesday, that's fun. Because in, yeah. in the UK, the, these public holidays always fall on a Friday or a Monday, so that way people don't take advantage of it. But throughout the rest of Europe, they um, yeah, I saw that they put they put um, they put it on a Wednesday or a Tuesday or whatever the natural day is, and therefore people take an extra day off work, and that's fun. Uh, but they, there's anything in summer basically, so May, June, July. Or there's there's one in May definitely a public holiday. May, yeah. May. Uh, I, I I guess this is somewhat to the point that I brought up before that all of these people are still in the chat basically. And uh, I said that, you know, that I encountered first in, in Bonn in January. And yeah. Ghosty knows me so well, like what he said about my yeah. Valentine's. And he just knows very well Ghosty them, wasn't, you know, this grounded Ghosty in wasn't reality. Here for that comment. Ghosty, I don't think, was here for that comment, but he's very much a uh, part of it. Yeah, I, th I, I think he wasn't there, but but yeah, it's a, it's a good example of what I was trying to say earlier. Yeah. The t the, basically, just for you, Ghosty, I'll, I'll repeat it. Basically, um, Demi made a good point about the 10 people that were with us in January are still with us in December, which is cool, um, but maybe surprising given some of the, the nutty conversations that we've had over the last 12 months. Um, I remember that Eager's coach said that Roland Gauss was uh, his least favorite slam. However, that was before he started Ooh. coaching. Yeah, okay, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, with Radvanska, it's, it's going to be your least favorite slam, right? When he was working <laughs> with her. Yeah. Although yeah. New York, she also had a surprisingly poor record in. But if you're if you're coaching Agnieszka Radwańska, it's going to be Melbourne either, where she was very consistent, or Wimbledon, of course. Ghosty likes Leon, but Leon is isn't Leon indoors hard? February? No, I mean depends on the WTA or the ATP. Um, Leon is on the men's side; it's on clay, whereas it was actually indoors. Yes, indeed, last year on hard courts. But again, it's all subjective. WTA. I mean, if you're watching from your living room, it doesn't matter. But I. Uh, that's the, one of the reasons I like the clay court season uh, is the fact that it's the he it heralds summer in Europe. So it's like uh, people it's sometimes just... have their their favorites, like just sitting on the couch, and then I'm I'm, I'm usually oh, surprised. Yeah. Like, why do you like this tournament more than the other? Well, I don't know. You know I mean, the I venue like looks good US or something. Open, uh, it's quite nice when it's sort of five p.m. start. I mean, I know it does then go on to five a.m. But but you know, coming home from work and turning on the TV. It's one of the, the, the sort of cooler ones in that respect. Bearing in mind, I know that the other ones happen during the day in Europe, but you're still going to, if you've got an, a regular nine to five job, you're going to miss most of the tennis. Yeah. Sure. Day is actually sometimes tougher to me, uh, yeah. for me to watch than night because I might have some other commitments. Whereas when tennis is happening at night, I'm probably going to watch it. So actually, yeah, the, you. the US Open might be a better time zone for me than. than Someone else that knows you, Jake, but. I Damien, look, these are all this is all part of the affinity that you're talking about. Look, do you see what Jake has said? What, <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jake, I, Jake, I've known <laughs> long before he joins uh, know, the yeah. streams, though. So, yeah. so, so, Jake is a bit of a different case. I still treat Jake as like a you know, friend from Twitter rather than from talking tennis, but yeah, definitely. but, but yeah, I mean, of course, in the last few months, he's been here a lot, so he also, uh, for it, for some other people, will count into that category for sure. Feast one Antwerp was it? No, no, no. It is Leon, as as Ghosty said. Oh, he did win Leon. And, okay. uh, he, got the Antwerp, final, he was in the final. Yes, he lost to Bublik. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, maybe Rotterdam is is 
okay. I, 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 by by at least what I is in February, so we're sort of you know spring is not far away. So it's all sorts of non-tennis reasons that I'm, I'm probably saying that for. Um, the the goal. I, I tell you this. I know I know that uh, Anastasia will disagree with me. A big start on this, but give me what? Indian Wells any day over Miami. Well, see, as I a, haven't been a, to Indian. I haven't been to a, Indian Wells yet. Person. So this is why Damien Damien won't understand me having this opinion on these two points. But as a couch person, by the second yeah. leg of that that sunshine double, mm-hmm. I'm, my my eyes are going towards the clay court season. Yeah, yeah. I watch but, way too much challengers to have this, you know, <laughs> because at the same time you're going to have a clay challenger. At the same time you're going to have three or four other events. So yeah, I guess I guess the the the, the best option for everyone if you're bored with something. If you're bored with a main tour event, if for some reason something doesn't suit you, just watch challenges. Hmm. Kids pull like <laughs> ghostly, I think. Is that right in answer to this question? What's the the Switzerland Austria one with the amazing Ma- manic backdrop? I think it's kids pull. Well, either, either, either that or or yeah, or Gstaad or Geneva. I don't know if it's actually going to be Gstaad or Kids Bio. It's kids pull, but I, I, I could be yeah. wrong. Just Google kids pull maybe and then. then Might uh, be uh, but of course, people are asking us in the chat, I think, because they want to have a chat with us rather than. Me telling them to go check Google. Imagine somebody um, yeah. said, "How many matches has X player won this year?" And I said, "Just go Google." Just go Google Actually, it. <laughs> I was asked about the doubles earlier by um, by one of our newbies uh, whose name escapes right now. Okan. Is that and, why you texted me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, mm, mm, <laughs> "I've got nothing really to say Maybe about the doubles." Which, in a yeah. way, was kind of the, the answer in the in the end. That not knowing yeah. anything about their doubles prowess was actually the answer because they don't have a doubles reputation uh, as such yeah. but i, I, I figured that you, you you probably want to use my answer for something i didn't i read the specific i didn't but... cheat i i sort of said oh, that's fine uh, that's fine a couple of things even if I you said... did the, the other way around i wouldn't mind i was expecting I know, it I so yeah all right well um i guess that's it people thank you for getting us to 5k anastasia do you want to respond to anything we've just said or or, or round anything off in the cold and snow, I wish, sorry, I'm just reading Ghosty's um, comment. I wish there was snow, but, you know, global warming and all, there's no snow on the East Coast this year so far. Um, we had a lot of snow, but not This right year now, so far, really. Anastasia, like, we've got about 12 hours left to change that. I know. <laughs> Things are crossed. <laughs> um, but oh. no, no comment. Just like, it was, it was really great to like be here with you at the, aw, look at Damien get all festive. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just found it on my bed um, <laughs> so yes are you having it tonight Damien? no no I bought it for because we had this Christmas party with our friends just like three days before Christmas Eve and mm-hmm. I went to the shop to buy a present because we had the secret Santa thing and uh, basically I saw the these things for like a very cheap actually amount uh, I think it was like 1.50 PLN so that would be, I guess, in euros, like 0.30 maybe. And oh, I decided wow. to buy it for every single person that was at the party. So that's why I still have mine. <laughs> there we go. Um, um, go on, Anastasia. No, I was just going to say, you know, no real comment. Just congratulations to Talking Tennis for 5,000 subscribers. Um, I think the new year is going to bring better, bigger things. And I'm just excited to be a part of it and watch John just, you know, be this media mogul that he is. It's good. Six, six, seven, eight, nine K doesn't have a ring to it. But I think once we get close to 10, I'll, I'll go back into spam mode. When we're on nine and a half thousand, <laughs> then I'll go back into that. Well, I'm, I'm getting a new landlady to see if we can get us over the, over <laughs> to, the get, to get us over the edge. <laughs> yeah. Um, OK, cool. Well, United Cup tick for today. Uh, we ended up covering all three. I'll matches. answer one more question because on, Blake uh, was talking about Danilovic. Granted, Novak wins some of his singles. Olga good enough to support him in singles? Probably not, but not because of her talent. Mostly because she hasn't been playing. Right? I mean, this was her first match in like three or four months. Midway, like through the summer last year, she actually had a very strong patch when she reached that third round at the, at the French Open. She won a couple of 125s, I think. But um, yeah, given that she has very little rhythm, probably not in the long run. So it, it will likely have to depend on mixed doubles. But maybe Novak is just strong enough to win both. I don't know. I've got yeah. something actually just to add, sorry, uh, which is regarding Ghosty and Anastasia in a way that, that Ghosty keeps leaving the chat at the point I want to... I even posted in the community tab uh, what Anastasia oh, was right. saying a couple of days ago. 
Um, and I was trying to get, so you said it, I think at the end of the stream, by which time Ghosty had already said ciao, and that ciao did mean ciao. Because ciao. Ghosty, yeah, because I've got this to sort of say about Anastasia, just giving me some advice, and he'd gone. Then I posted in the community tab. I don't know if Ghosty's seen it or, or responded to it. If he has, I apologize. But what was that advice, Anastasia? So what I think is happening is if you watch Tennis TV on a mobile app, it doesn't show you all the streams. But if you log into the Tennis TV TV app, so from your television, from you know Apple TV, Roku, any of that, you do get all of the streams because that was Ghosty's problem. He could only see Perth, I think, or he could only see Sydney. I can't remember which one. But um, if you log through their TV app, you can see all the streams that they do. Ghosty, yeah. I hope you understood that because I didn't understand any of it, but that's just because of my ignorance. Uh, <laughs> no, I kind of get it. Uh, you I know how things but, um, but Ghosty, uh, hopefully you're still here for that amount of Ghosty's gone again. Because it, it happened again this morning, Anastasia. At the end of Damien's stream, I just suddenly thought, oh, hang on a second, I've got a message for Ghosty. And I wrote it to him, no response. I wrote it again, no response. So he, I think he's got it now, though, because he's Yeah, he's chat. got it now. So Ghosty, try that. If try you like, have a, a Roku or a, or a Fire Stick or any of those connected to your TV, or if you just have the TV app from like a Samsung TV or something like that. It should be, um, I don't belong out West because the East Coast is the best coast, Ghosty. We know this, we've spoken about this before. West um, is best though, because West rhymes with, with best. So it must be the best for no other reason than that. No, I mean, I don't give a flying proverbial. <laughs> we'll see, we'll see when I go out to Indian Wells this year, maybe I will become a West Coaster if, if it's better than Miami, we'll see. But you're still a bit inland, aren't you? I mean, I know it's West Coast, but you're still two or three hours now. Um, anyway. Okay. Okay. On that bombshell, hopefully Ghosty that's uh, figured things out um, <laughs> now. Um, but if it hasn't, then then, then we're out of ideas. <laughs> uh, not for the first time on this channel. So that's something that we'll be continuing into 2024. And on that uh, note, I will bring things to a close. Damien, Anastasia, thank you. Happy New Year. And uh, yeah, happy new year. Um, we won't be seeing that hat that Damien's got uh, on the stream anymore, but we will be, uh, I'm sure he will be sharing his uh, thoughts and wisdom uh, on the tennis world in what will be officially 2024. But as we've already mentioned, we're already in the 2024 season. And that will also herald the arrival of, uh, or the return of Miles as well, who grumpily said in the chat a couple of days ago, I'm not uh, entertaining tennis until we are officially into 2024. Uh, and uh, so that's cool. So we'll be seeing him in the next day or two, I'm sure, um, which is uh, cool. Oh, and by the way, oh, I know I keep saying, by the way, uh, Darius has just uh, joined us uh, on the, in the Talking Tennis group. He's a guy I actually work with at Deutsche Welle, who I have um, was chatting to the other day, and he just told me how much of a big tennis fan he is. And he also said something like, he's not really into the gossip. He likes all the technical side. I was like, we need more. We need really? more. Yeah, yeah. So um, You're I, like, I, I said, ooh. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if you fancy coming on the show sometime of chat. And if you also don't mind, I can add you to the WhatsApp group. And so that's that's who Darius is. You just seen um he's a British guy uh, who works at Deutsche Welle. So fingers crossed uh, he'll be joining us on a few streams in 2024. All right, that definitely really is it, especially as we're hemorrhaging uh, viewers right now. We've gone from like a hundred to sixteen over the last 20 minutes since the uh since we started talking about all sorts of random stuff. And we've just gone down to the 16 people that have been throughout with us throughout the year, which is enough for me anyway. And on that bombshell, uh, everybody else, uh, happy new year. Uh, how, how is that how you say DW? I was, or, yeah, Deutsche Welle. Mm. Anyway, uh, on that bombshell, I will bring this to a close. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.